In part 17 of our build guide, we install the steering system, pedal box, and brake lines. Use pieces of the donor car's passenger side radiator hose to protect the frame as you install the steering rack. Slide the rack into the frame under the battery box. Use the supplied hardware to mount the steering rack to the frame. Torque the hardware to 81 foot-pounds with a 19 mm socket and a wrench. Use the supplied hardware to install the electronic power steering bracket. The bracket needs to be oriented with the bent edge toward the back of the car. Bolt the electronic power steering unit to the bracket with the original power steering unit bolts. Push the donor's intermediate steering shaft onto the steering rack shaft. Use thread locker on the provided 8mm bolts. Don't use the 8mm bolt with the machined head. Do the same to connect the other end of the shaft to the power steering unit. Lower the pedal box over the mount on the X brace. Bolt the top of the box to the support tube with an 8mm bolt and nut from your donor hardware. Use the supplied 8mm bolt with the machined head and a donor nut to bolt the lower driver's side of the pedal box. Torque both to 18 foot-pounds. Install the brake booster with the original nuts. Torque to 18 foot-pounds. Install the throttle pedal with the original bolts. Install the brake pedal position sensor. Connect the brake pedal to the brake booster pushrod. Remove the brake fluid reservoir from the master cylinder. Install the master cylinder with the original nuts. Torque to 18 foot-pounds. Screw the rear master cylinder line into the front master cylinder port. Tighten it with a 13 mm wrench. Install the front master cylinder line between the front brake tee and the rear master cylinder port. Tighten both nuts with a 10 mm wrench. Use a 5/32 Allen wrench and a 7/16 socket to tighten the front brake tee hardware. Bend the horn strap down to give clearance to the radiator fan and hoses that will be installed later. Use a 10 mm socket to loosen the horn nut and aim the horn toward the front of the car. Use a Phillip tip screwdriver to install the self-drilling screws and quarter inch coated clamps to hold the rear master cylinder line. One side at a time, loop the rear brake lines over the rear cage tubes and screw the tube nuts into the rear brake tee. Tighten 
Tighten the tube nuts with a 10 millimeter wrench. Just like at the front, use a Phillips screwdriver to install coated clamps to hold the brake lines. Slip a short piece of edge trim over the lower fuel tank rail where the brake line touches. Then attach a 1 inch coated clamp to hold the line against the edge trim. Do the same for the other rear brake line. The first stage kit comes with nylon tubing to extend the vacuum line from the booster to the intake. The first step is to trim the original vacuum line. Measure 6 inches back as shown and cut the hose. Set this piece aside for now. Measure 2 inches further and cut again. Put a hose clamp on the 2 inch piece of hose and tighten until the hose starts to compress. Insert 1 inch of the nylon tubing into the 2 inch hose and tighten the hose clamp. Tighten until the tubing is held firmly. Remove the original hose clamp from the leftover piece of vacuum hose. Install the hose clamp on the 2 inch piece of hose. Place the roll of nylon tubing on the passenger floor and guide it up through the tunnel. Wrap the tubing above the steering rack and slip the 2 inch hose onto the brake booster fitting. Slide the hose clamp up to hold the hose on the fitting. Take the roll of nylon tubing to the back of the floor pan and drape it over the edge. In the next video, we'll install the BCM gauges and radiator.